Hi guys, welcome back to Grania's Home and Kitchen. So guys, I just put up a video recently of how to make sourdough starter. So tonight we're going to make sourdough bread. Now I want you to know that I've had a few fails. This was not the easiest task that I have ever taken on. But I'm hoping that I can teach you and you will learn from the mistakes that I made. So I looked at lots of different videos on how to make it and I tried a few different ways and I came to the conclusion that the recipes that I followed there wasn't enough water in it for the flour and I couldn't understand why but then I remembered when I moved to Canada I had to adjust some of my recipes to suit Canadian flour so the flour is very different in Europe to what it is here in Canada and the most important thing when you're making sourdough bread is that your your dough is wet enough it's easy to bring it back from being too wet but it's impossible to bring it back from being too dry so the first few times I made it it was just way too dry because all the recipes I followed were looking for between 280 and 300 grams of water to 400 grams of flour and it just simply wasn't working for me. So I, you know, I made a few adjustments and this is what I came up with and the bread was actually delicious. Now I'm not saying that it is the perfect sourdough bread and I know there are sourdough experts out there who will probably see some mistakes that I am making but this is not a masterclass guys. This is a class for beginners. And like all things with baking, you get better the more you do it, okay? So I'm just gonna tell you all the things you're going to need before you start. Obviously, you're going to need your flour, so I'm gonna use whole wheat and all-purpose. Now, they all say use like a strong flour or a bread flour, but it's COVID-19 and you should be just thankful to get flour. I went to about five different stores before I finally found it. So I have an Indian whole wheat, which is very fine, just like a regular flour and I have some all-purpose. You'll also need a weighing scales. A weighing scales is vital because you do need to be precise. This isn't like when I make my scones and my soda bread and I can throw a little extra in, leave a little extra out. With this, it has to be precise. So you're gonna need a weighing scales. Uh, obviously, you're gonna need a bowl. And most importantly, you're going to need your starter. So this starter I fed it this morning, so it should be nice and ripe and ready to go for tonight. You're also going to need a set, well I use a second bowl and you'll see why I use a second bowl. So we're going to need a second bowl for weighing and then the, you also need salt. So this is sea salt I'm using. So salt is important because one of the mistakes I made, I forgot to put salt in it. The bread actually rose lovely but you could tell that it was, it was very bland. It needed the salt. And you're going to need some, um, not distilled water, filtered water. And if you don't have a filter, you can use bottled water. And all the recipes I watched, of course, they were experts and they like made beautiful bread and they had beautiful supplies and they had Dutch ovens. And I don't have a Dutch oven and I didn't really want to buy one. So I have this pot, it came with my set of pots and I usually use it to make like spaghetti bolognese or curries or whatever, but it has an oven proof lid as well. So it's, it's completely oven proof. So this is what I use. So you can see it's got a nice size to it. If you don't have one of these, but you have a Pyrex dish that is a deep bowl and a lid, you can use that and you just reverse it. So you just use the lid for the bread and you cover it over with the dome. You can also add a tray of boiling water to the oven because basically the important part of rising this bread and cooking that lovely delicious hard crust is steam. So you have a couple of options. You don't have to go out and buy an expensive Dutch oven. So, oh, and you'll need a tea towel. Okay, and you'll need some parchment paper as well, actually. So let's begin. So this has been a trial and error. I, I actually have lost track of the amount of times I have cooked this bread. Sometimes I didn't even bother baking it because I knew it wasn't gonna bake up. So let's hope I finally have it down to a tea. So like I say, there's, there are thousands of different ways of doing this. This particular way just seemed to work for me. So how, how I start out is I take my bowl and I'm going to weigh out 310 grams of water. Now most recipes call for between 280 and 3 and I tried it with 320, it was a little too wet. So 310 grams of water. If you're in Europe possibly you will possibly only need 300 but like I said earlier you can bring it back from being too wet but you can't bring it back from being too dry so we're going to weigh out so 300 grams of water is actually 300 mil but let's just weigh it just to make it easier than trying to to find the measurements on this 
So 300 grams, 310 grams. I know it sounds like 10 grams, what's 10 grams? But that little bit of extra water definitely made a difference. So. Okay guys, so I'm being very precise and unfortunately you do have to be very precise with this recipe. There'll be no such thing as Grania just throwing in any measurements that she feels like. So here I'm adding my starter, which is the Levan. And I'm going to put a link here so you can check out how I made it. I'm so proud of this. This was my first time to make it and I can't believe that it actually worked. And I think you will enjoy it. For me, it, this, the whole science of this was just so completely satisfying. So there again, I'm being very exact, making sure that I'm adding the right amount of starter. Now there are some recipes that don't do it this way. They add the water to the flour first and then they add the starter. But I found that this way worked best for me and everybody will have their own way. I'm just giving it a little whisk there. You don't need to mix it in too well, but just giving it a little help. And now I'm going to weigh my flour. Again, you have to be very exact. So what I do is, I, it's 400 grams of flour. So I put in 300 grams of all-purpose white flour and 100 grams of the whole wheat flour. Now remember guys, this whole wheat flour is an Indian whole wheat, so it's very fi uh, finely refined. But you could use just regular whole wheat as well. It, this just happens to be all I could find during COVID-19. It certainly gave me a run for my money trying to find flour. Every single store and ev every shelf is empty. Now I'm gonna show you now in a second how fine the flour is, just so you know what I'm talking about. So see there, it's just like a white flour. So now I'm measuring out my 100 grams of whole wheat flour. Wow. Now I'm adding my 10 grams of salt. And like I said earlier, guys, this is so important because if it doesn't have salt in it, it just tastes really bland. I'm being very precise, aren't I? <laughs> okay, guys, so now I'm going to add my dry ingredients to my wet ingredients. I did try doing this the other way around and I didn't have any great success with it. So I'm just taking my spatula to make sure that all the flour is well combined with the water and the leaven. So you'll see I'm, I'm taking, trying to get everything from the corners in and I'm just basically folding it in on top of itself. Once I have it combined, I'll then use my hand and I will form it into a rough uh, round shape, I guess, but I won't knead it at this time. This is not the kneading stage. The kneading stage is to follow. So you can see there I'm scraping down the edges, folding everything into itself. And then when I have it all together, I'm going to let it rest for half an hour before I give it its first fold. Okay guys, so now I'm showing you that you should wet your hands when you're handling the dough. The dough is very wet and you will be inclined to use flour, but you shouldn't really add any more flour to it. But if you wet your hands, your hands won't stick to the dough. So this is actually a really good tip and it really makes such a difference when you're handling the, the dough. And you will be doing this every time you handle the dough until the very end. So you can see I just formed it into a shape and now I'm just taking a tea towel and I'm covering it with the tea towel and I'm going to let that sit for half an hour. Okay guys, so it's been sitting for half an hour and now I'm coming to do the first fold. So I'm showing you there again that I wet my hands and how you fold it is, you'll just see I'm kind of loosening it from the bottom and then you're going to take the corner of the dough, you're gonna stretch it out and fold it in on itself. So stretch it out and in on itself. Now, I was only supposed to do this like eight times. I turned the bowl like a quarter turn, but I think I got carried away. I think it did it more than, than eight times. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm catching the edges, kind of using the heel of my hand to pull it out and folding it back in. This is actually very soothing. It reminds me of my homemade Play-Doh that I used to make for the kids when they were little. It's just so soft and easy to manipulate. Now I'm just scooping it up and I'm turning it over 
and we're going to let it rest for another half hour before we come back to do our second fold. Okay, so here we are. I wet my hands again. I'm working through the dough and going to do exactly the same thing as I did for my first fold. And we're going to do this one more time before we let our dough rest. Now this is the last stretch. Can you see how flexible the dough is now? It's much more flexible than it was in the other two. Now I'm doing what they call the window pane test. So if you pull the dough out and it doesn't rip into a hole, you know you've done a good job. After we finish this fold, we're going to let the dough sit for two and a half hours before we come back to start our first shaping. Okay guys, my dough has been resting for two and a half hours and you can see how much it has expanded. We're now going to give it its first shape. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my countertop. And I'm going to, you can actually flour your, ha your hands as well, just because I'm going to take this out. So I'm going, to, now we don't want to flatten it guys. So I'm going to handle it a little bit gently. Okay, and we're going to give it its first fold. Now the first fold is very similar. We're going to just fold it in on itself and we're going to try and build up the gluten. Okay, so you're going to pull it out and fold it in. Pull it out, fold it in. We can turn it around. So I need to have a little bit of flour on your counter. Up and in and up and in. Then, so you can get one of these bench scrapers. You can get them in Dollarama. I have this one from when I had my coffee shop. So then just use it to help you flip the, the flour open. Over, I should say, not open. So now we're going to try and get it into like a taut ball. I'm just gonna push away the flour now. And you take, excuse me, the underneath of your hands here and you're going to tuck it under the flower and pull it towards you and turn it and pull it towards you again and pull it towards you again and towards you again. The goal is to get a nice tight ball but we won't get it at this stage because this is just the first fold. So now we're going to cover it with our dishcloth. Actually I'm going to cover it, I have this other dishcloth here. I'm going to cover it with the dishcloth and I'm going to leave it for about 20 minutes and then we're going to come back and give it the final fold. Okay guys, so while we're waiting, I'm just taking my bowl. I actually floured this, and but I had too much in it, so I, pour, I took some out. So you're going to line it with the tea towel and just give it a light flouring so that your dough doesn't stick to the tea towel. And then we're going to prepare it to go into the fridge overnight. Okay guys, so now it has rested for 20 minutes and I'm going to give it its final fold. So you can actually, you can use this to fold it, but actually I'm, not, I'm gonna use my hand. So you fold over on it again, there's some flour there. And this is just building up the, the strength of the gluten. Fold it over again, same idea. Stretch it out and fold it over, maybe not as, um, as big a stretch this time. Kind of sticking a bit there so now i'm going to roll it over sorry guys I'm i don't know why i'm being so awkward so now again we're going to take the ball of our hands and we're going to pull it towards us and you can see that it's forming into a nice ball i need to put some um, flour on my hands i'm sticking a little bit it's okay at this stage to use a little bit of flour okay and now i'm going to Pull it into it, pull it towards me. So it's actually using the countertop as friction uh, to move it. You can also use this if you like to pull it if you don't want to use your hands. So what we're trying to do is create a nice tight ball. I prefer to use my hands though. So now you can use um, this here. You can lift up your bread and you're going to top, toss it in top down. Okay, like so. I'm just going to move my um, towel around and then I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the top. Just a little bit on the top. 
Okay guys, so now I'm going to put it into a plastic bag. I'm going to put it in the fridge and we'll bake it in the morning. Okay guys, so one time, I, one night I made it really late and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to put it in the fridge. I'm going to leave it out and see how it is in the morning. And it was completely overproved. So don't be tempted to do that. It's best to put it into the fridge. So I have these, um, they're compostable bags that I use for my food bin. So I'm going to put it into that. I'm going to tie a knot in it. And let it just continue to prove in the fridge overnight and it'll be perfect to bake in the morning. Okay, so now guys I'm putting it in the fridge and I'll be back to you in the morning to bake it. Good morning everyone. So now it's time to bake our bread. So let's have a look and see how it did overnight. So here's our bread. Now I have my pot heating in the oven. So it's very, very hot. So you gotta be very careful now at this stage when you're handling everything. So I'm just going to put some flour on a plate. And I'm going to tip, sorry, I'm not going to tip. I'm going to put the plate on top and then I'm gonna turn over the bread. And then we can take off our, oh, you can see there it's falling down a bit. Okay, I'm going to take off our tea towel. And there's our bread. Sorry, it's a bit lopsided. Now, okay, so you have to score the top of the bread. And the reason for this is if you don't, it, it'll kind of explode out the sides because there's so much air inside this bread. But you're, pro you're probably aware that there's lots of different designs. So a little bit of history that I discovered when I was researching this. The reason there are so many different shapes for the top of them is that years ago, I guess hundreds of years ago, people used to use communal ovens. So they all had their own signature um, cuts on bread so they knew which bread was theirs. So there's a little bit of trivia for you. Okay, so you mostly people use a blade, but this is a really, really sharp knife, so it works. But typically you would use a blade to do this. So my little shape has been a, a Z or Z, depending on where you come from. So you're going to take your blade and you're going to score across quickly. And you can see there that it might, I'll just kind of help this a little bit again, but you can see my blade, my knife is nice and sharp so I can do it this way. And then I'm going to go across this way. And you want them to be smooth cuts. You don't want to be hesitant as you're going across. Okay, so now I'm going to take my pan out of the oven so it's going to be really, really hot. Now I put my parchment in before I put it in the oven because um, you know, this happens every time I put it in. There's always water in it and I don't know if that's the steam that has built up or whether there's a little residue of water in my pot before I put it in. So I'm just going to mop that up. Now I'm very carefully going to take my bread and I'm going to pop it in. Okay, now we're going to put my lid back on. So now I'm going to put it in the oven for 20 minutes with the lid on. Then I'm going to remove the lid and bake it for another 20 minutes. Okay guys, so I will be back. Okay guys, I'm going to try and stay out of the frame because I'm wearing my standard COVID uniform, AKA my pajamas. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you. So it has been cooking for 20 minutes. You can see that it's risen beautifully but there, it, the, the crust hasn't browned. So now we are going to put it back in for another 20 minutes with the lid off. Okay guys, so here is the bread. Doesn't it look absolutely beautiful? I'm gonna put it on a cooling rack. I'll take it out. Be very careful when you're handling it. Oh, that's very hot. Okay, so don't do that, all right? <laughs> So I'll just show you, you listen here. We have that lovely hollow sound. So we know our bread is cooked. Let's remove this out of the way. And I will be back to you 
in about 15 minutes and we'll cut through it and let's hope, fingers crossed, that it's a good loaf. <laughs> okay guys, so sorry, I thought I had the video on when I was actually cutting it, but to be honest with you, it's actually too hot to be cutting right now. But I'm very pleased with it, look at how it turned out um, and it smells absolutely delightful. Look at the size of that doorstep, that's because it's too hot. <laughs> but anyway, it's lovely and crunchy on the top, I don't know if you can hear that. And um, Kieran is digging in. We cut it early because Kieran made bacon and eggs for breakfast. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, and if you could subscribe to my channel, you know that would be amazing. And please, guys, stay safe during our COVID 19 and have a wonderful weekend. Take care.